All right, let's dive in. Someone sent us this article by Sylvia Ola, and it's really got us thinking about how performance management is done. Yeah, she worked with this construction and design company, like 650 people. Uh -huh. And they basically blew up their old system and rebuilt it from scratch. Complete overhaul. That's a big undertaking. It is. But what's even more interesting is her argument against fairness. Like, she actually says being fair can be a problem. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. How can fairness be a bad thing? Well, it's more about how we traditionally think about fairness in these systems. Yeah. You know, treating everyone equally. Well, like everyone gets the same bonus, same expectations, all that. Exactly. But she makes a good point that this can actually hold people back, especially those who are, you know, really excelling. I see. So you're saying it can disincentivize people from going above and beyond. Yeah, and it doesn't really acknowledge the reality that people contribute in different ways. Some folks are just naturally going to be higher performers. Hmm, that makes sense. So how did Sylvia approach this whole performance management redesign? Where did they even begin with a project like that? They literally started from scratch, got rid of all the old baggage, and built something totally new. And that's rare, right? M most companies just try to tweak things here and there patch things up. Yeah, and there's actually research on that. Lucy Adams, a big name in the HR world. Oh yeah, I've heard of her. She found that layering new practices on top of a broken system just doesn't work. The new stuff never really sticks. Makes sense. You need a solid foundation to build on. Kind of like, I don't know, trying to build a house on a swamp. Exactly. You've got to drain the swamp first. Okay, so Sylvia and this company, they drain the swamp. What they do next? One of the first things they focused on was aligning goals. It's pretty basic, right? It is, but you'd be amazed how many companies struggle with this. Yeah, I, I guess it's easy to get caught up in day-to-day -day tasks and lose sight of the big picture. Exactly. And when that happens, you end up with people pulling in different directions. No one's on the same page. So how do you fix that? Like, how do they make sure everyone was rowing in the same direction, so to speak? They made sure every single employee's goals connected directly back to the company's larger objectives. No more than five key performance indicators and objectives for each person. Okay, so they had this clear line of sight from individual goals all the way up to the company's strategic objectives. I like it. Right, and to keep things simple, they divided those goals into two main categories business objectives and job-related objectives. So business objectives, those are the ones tied to the bottom line, right? Yep. Revenue, profit, all that. Yep, exactly. Think sales targets, project deadlines, things like that, hard numbers. And what about those job-related objectives? What do those look like? Those are still crucial, but they may not have that direct link to revenue. Like in the article, she mentions that one of the HR department's goals was implementing this new performance management system itself by the end of 2024. Makes sense. Big project, huge impact, but not directly driving sales. Uh. So they have this framework for goals, but then they let the employees set their own goals within that framework, of course. Yep, they did. And that's a huge shift from how a lot of companies operate. You know, the manager hands down a list of goals. Right. Here's what you need to achieve this year. Make it happen. But Sylvia's approach is more collaborative. Definitely. There's a lot of research showing that people are much more motivated and engaged when they've had a hand in setting their own goals. It's like if you've had input, you feel more ownership over those goals. You're not just doing what you're told. Exactly. And it taps into that intrinsic motivation. People naturally want to do a good job when they feel like they have a say in what they're working towards. That makes sense. Plus, a little healthy competition never hurts, right? Oh, absolutely. It's human nature. When you see your colleagues setting ambitious goals, it pushes you to up your game too. And that's a good thing for everyone involved. Okay, I can already see how this is so different from those traditional performance management systems that try to be fair by treating everyone the same. Right, the whole everyone gets a trophy approach. But let's be real, not everyone deserves a trophy. And trying to pretend that everyone is performing at the same level can actually be detrimental to those who are truly excelling. It's like holding back your star players. So how do they address that? How do they make sure those high performers were recognized and rewarded? That's where things get really interesting because Sylvia's philosophy is you shouldn't be afraid to reward high performers differently. And this company really embraced that idea. Okay, tell me more. How do they actually do that? They completely ditched their old annual bonus structure. You know, the kind where everyone gets a pretty standard percentage increase. Yeah, I've seen that. It can feel kind of arbitrary, like it doesn't really matter how well you do. Exactly. So instead, they implemented a system of quarterly variable compensation, and it's tailored to each department. 
Oh, so it's not just a blanket approach. They take into account the specific goals and metrics of each team. Yep. So for the sales team, it might be heavily weighted towards hitting those sales targets. While for the operations team, it might be more about delivering projects on time and under budget. Makes sense. Keep the rewards aligned with the work. But it sounds like there's even more to it than that, right? There is. They actually go a step further and specifically reward the top 10% of performers separately. Wow, they're not messing around. No pretending that everyone is the same here. Not at all. And I think that sends a powerful message to your top performers. It shows them that you see them, you value their contributions, and you're willing to invest in their continued success. It's about celebrating those who are going above and beyond and fostering a culture where high performance is not just expected, but actively rewarded. Absolutely. And remember, this isn't just about giving out plaques or gift cards. We're talking about real tangible rewards, increased bonuses, stock options, maybe even special perks. It shows a real commitment to recognizing and retaining top talent. Which, let's face it, is what drives any organization forward. It is. But, you know, it makes me wonder about the flip side of that. We've talked a lot about the high performers, but what about the managers? How does this system hold them accountable? That's a great question. And it's something Sylvia addresses head on in her article. Okay, good. Because I'm imagining a scenario where a manager is hitting all their business targets, but their team is completely miserable. Like they're a tyrant who gets results. Exactly. And Sylvia's approach doesn't let them get away with that. In this system, they measure leadership performance based on two things, business outcomes and employee experience. Ah, so it's not enough to just make money. You also have to make sure your people are happy. Precisely. It's about finding that balance between achieving those business goals and creating a positive, supportive work environment. I like that. Because ultimately, they're both connected. If your team is constantly stressed and unhappy, it's going to impact their performance eventually. Mm. So what happens if a manager is hitting their business targets, but their team is giving them terrible feedback? Are there actual consequences? Oh, there are. And that's where things get really interesting. So we're talking about those managers who might be great at hitting those business targets, but terrible at, you know, the people stuff. Yeah, those bosses everyone dreads. What happens to them in Sylvia's system? They don't just get a free pass. If they're consistently missing those employee experience KPIs, there are real consequences. Like what? Give me the juicy details. Well, it could mean they get passed over for promotions, even if they're killing it on the business side. Yeah. And in extreme cases, it could even mean, you know. Getting fired. Wow, they're serious about this whole employee experience thing. They are. It sends a strong message that creating a positive work environment is just as important as hitting those financial goals. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you have a team that's constantly stressed out and miserable, it's going to affect their work eventually. Exactly. It's all connected. You can't just ignore the human side of the equation. Okay, so we've talked about aligning goals, rewarding high performers, holding leaders accountable. What else did Sylvia change about this company's approach? Well, the next big thing is how they completely redefine their competency framework. And I think this is something a lot of companies could learn from. Okay, competency frameworks. Every company seems to have one, but they're often filled with these vague, fluffy terms that are hard to actually measure, like mm -hmm. strategic thinking or communication skills. Have you seen that? Oh, all the time. And it drives me crazy because what does strategic thinking even mean? It's so subjective. Yeah. One person's strategic thinking is another person's analysis paralysis. Right? Exactly. So Sylvia and the company decided to ditch those traditional, vague behavioral competencies altogether. Wait, they got rid of them entirely? What did they replace them with? They streamlined the whole framework to focus on measurable knowledge and technical skills. Skills that are specific to each role and department. Okay, so instead of trying to assess someone's communication skills in general, they look at their ability to, say, write clear and concise reports yeah. or give effective presentations. Exactly. It's about getting specific and focusing on things you can actually observe and measure. That makes so much more sense. It's giving employees clear expectations and a way to track their progress. Right. And this shift really makes sense when you consider Sylvia's overall approach. We talked about how they set goals tied to specific business outcomes, right? Those hard numbers. Well, achieving those outcomes requires specific skills and knowledge. So by focusing on those tangible, measurable competencies, you're creating a much clearer path for employees to succeed. It's like giving them a roadmap instead of just a vague sense of direction. They know exactly what skills they need to develop to excel in their roles. You got it. But now you might be wondering, 
What about those soft skills everyone's always talking about? Do they just throw those out the window? Yeah, the values, the behaviors, all that interpersonal stuff, surely those still matter. Of course they do. But instead of having a separate list of behavioral competencies, Sylvia helped them find a clever way to incorporate those elements. They actually use the company's values as a guide for desired behaviors. So if one of their values is collaboration, they use that as a lens through which they evaluate behavior. Exactly. And by tying those values to the performance management system, they're reinforcing their importance and making it clear that they're not just empty words on a poster. They're fundamental to how they operate. I like that. It's about walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So we've covered a lot of ground here, from ditching the old fairness playbook to aligning goals, rewarding high performers, holding leaders accountable, and even rethinking competency frameworks. This is a pretty comprehensive overhaul. What stands out to you the most about Sylvia's approach? I think what's most striking is this emphasis on clarity and alignment, this laser focus on measurable results. They stripped away all the fluff and got down to what really matters, yeah. helping employees develop the skills they need and rewarding them for their contributions. It's a system designed to be effective and motivating, which is a pretty rare combination. It is, and it challenges that traditional one-size-fits-all mentality, doesn't it? It does. It acknowledges that people are different, they contribute in different ways, and they should be recognized and rewarded accordingly. And that brings us to the final piece of Sylvia's approach, which might be the most thought-provoking of all. So we're talking about how Sylvia's approach throws out this idea of treating everyone equally in the name of fairness. Yeah, and, and that leads to this concept of equity, right, which she's a big advocate for. Okay, equity. I hear that word a lot. What does it actually mean in this context? So equality is treating everyone the same, giving everyone the same opportunities and resources, but equity is about giving people what they need to succeed, recognizing that those needs might be different for different people. Okay, so it's not about everyone getting the same thing. It's about everyone getting what they need to be successful. Exactly. And you see that reflected in every aspect of the performance management system Sylvia helped create. Individualized goals, customized rewards, development plans. It's all about supporting each person in a way that helps them reach their full potential. And that actually makes the whole rewarding high performers differently thing make a lot more sense. Right. It's not about being unfair to those who aren't at the very top. It's about acknowledging that everyone brings different strengths and contributes in different ways. And that those high achievers can actually inspire others to step up their game. Exactly. It sets a high bar, but it also acknowledges that not everyone will reach that same level. And that's OK. This has been such a fascinating deep dive. I mean, we've really covered it all. Rethinking fairness, aligning goals, embracing individualization, redefining competency frameworks. It's a pretty bold model. It challenges a lot of the traditional thinking about performance management. It does. And it's incredibly refreshing. So for our listener out there who shared Sylvia's article with us, what would you say is the biggest takeaway? The one thing they should really be thinking about as they head back to their own workplaces. Don't be afraid to question the status quo. Like, don't assume that the way things have always been done is the best way or the only way. Sylvia's work with this company shows us that it is possible to create a system that's both effective and motivating, fair and equitable. One that truly supports both individual growth and company success. And if our listener wants to explore these ideas further, maybe get some help putting them into practice. Reach out to The Strengths Company. We love helping organizations build performance management systems that work for everyone. Awesome. Well, this has been another great deep dive. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, keep those brains engaged and keep challenging those assumptions.